Morning guys, it's only me. Welcome to another glorious sunny summer day here over in Blighty. As you can see, <laughs> no sun at all. Um, it's been raining off and on since yesterday, which the garden has really benefited from. Um, I just thought I'd do a really quick um, tour of all the changes. Look at all the dead slugs and snails. It's like a pet cemetery over here. There's loads of them. But yeah, I finally got rid of my broad beans and the peas that were in here because they just weren't doing anything. Whatever beans were left on the plants were just getting eaten up. So I thought, might as well just whip them out and put something else in. So I put five rows of beetroot because they're pretty quick growing. And um, by the time they're ready for harvesting, all the rest of those plants should hopefully be coming out so I can get that cleared. Um, my winter veg are doing really well. Um, I did try putting a bit of string. I don't know if you can make out them. I put a few bamboo canes and tied a bit of string on just to try and um, give my leeks uh, some light but um hasn't really worked out my some valerie ca carrots which are the ones on the left hand side not that you can tell um they're about a centimeter across now so they're doing really well and my parsnips are about an inch across so they're doing great guns right what else have we got Try not to wobble. My runner beans are throwing out those tendrils which will climb up and around the um, canes. But I want that one to grow a little bit longer. I'm going to transfer it over to this one so it can grow up that one because I put two next to that one. But I'd had, start again, I've had four misfires in 13 plants so. Not done too bad actually. Right. Ooh, negotiate myself through the foliage. Now my cucumbers are really taken off. And I seem to have plenty of peas on my pea plants. I was gonna actually pull them out and give uh, the cucumbers a chance but they seem to be quite happy together. Um, that first cucumber we've actually picked because that hit the floor and well, grew to the floor and I didn't want that rotting off. But just in there, I've got another one. So it's finally starting to set some fruit. I've been picking the uh, beetroot. That's been really nice. And then, I don't know if you can see up there. I've got the male tassels coming on my sweet corn. What I'll do is I'll uh, nip round. Oop, do a little twirl. Get a closer look. There you go. It's opening up now. But look, I'm getting some corn. <laughs> Sorry, it's just these little things that please me. So, because this is a baby corn variety, um, I'm, you pick them before they get pollinated. So, once the silks appear, that's the time for picking them. So, I'm hoping to get between four and eight baby cobs on each plant. So, I'll just pick them as they uh, appear. Right, now I did harvest one of my international kidney, forgetting that they're actually a second early, so they actually need 120 days, um, so I didn't get much from that at all. So they need another 20 days and then should be able to start harvesting them. Um, I've planted up some more of the Ferrari dwarf beans, or bush beans as you call them. We've got two tubs there. Um, I've got five carrot varieties in those. 
Now that one, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see, they've actually popped up. They're the Baby Ideal. And then the next one, I'm just going to try and position that and try and point it out right there. Got one popped up and that's an early Nantes 2. Now that tub there and that one there is something called a Root Eagle Parsley. Now it's a two bedroom one. The leaves you harvest like flat leaf parsley or cilantro, I think you call it in the States. And the roots um, grow into mini parsnips. Um, it's not a true parsnip, but it's a stronger tasting, but not as sweet. And they're a lot easier to grow, a lot easier to germinate than parsnips. And they're also winter hardy, which means you can leave them out all winter and just harvest them as and when you need them. So first time growing those and I'll let you know how they turn out and how they taste. I had some spring onions left over in the um, shed so I potted them on and in that tub I had four leeks left over so I popped them in there with um, some pop bottle windbreaks. So I cut the top and bottom off, stapled them together and uh, see how they go. Um, do -do -do -do. Right, quickly nip into the shed. Show you my peppers and oh, sorry, my chilies. My peppers haven't come through yet. Right, there we go. Now, there you go. Got two quite big ones there. Come on, focus. That's better. And then there's a few little baby ones at the top. Two there. And another two there. And that one is a chili chalaca. I'm probably not pronouncing it right. So that's the label. And I think I've got three of those. Just I've got another one there. It's a bit dark. And then there's another one right at the back. Oh, I want. And then I've got my cherry ones which are really putting on some weight and I've got some more baby ones at the top so yeah I'm really pleased with those and then I have got I don't, I'm not sure what variety that one is because I lost the label but the smaller one behind it is a sweet bell pepper now I did cut the foliage quite severely on them and they've really bushed out but I've not seen any sign of flowers yet so I don't know if they will actually produce anything or if we'll have enough time left in the growing season for them to, you know, get any fruit, but, or peppers, should I say. So we'll have to wait and see. Ooh. Because it's the 12th of July, um, I've only got eight days left on my um, home guard. I've got four tubs left of those, so I'm determined to wait for the 100 day mark and see how we do with them but yeah they're just about ready now because all the foliage is bent over and dying off they're a determinate variety um an early variety right let's have a look now that little specimen is a rhubarb plant and i thought that had died on me but it showed some signs of life so i put it out here and it's growing Slowly, but it's growing, so we'll see how that does. I'll oh, just look at them tomatoes. Absolutely tons. There's millions of them, just about. And there's still loads of flowers as well. But I want to show you two in particular. Those two there. I don't know if you can see the colour difference. They're turning like a yellowy green now which means they're almost ready to ripen up. Because what happens is they turn from the greeny white to that yellowy green. That's a good indicator that they're going to start turning red soon. So depending on the weather and whether or not it warms up again, because it's only about 15 degrees. So yeah, 
definitely going to be a bumper crop for me this year. And the carrots are looking really sorry for themselves. I'm getting really yellow around the edges now, so it won't be long before I'll be doing another carrot reveal. Right, let's see what else we've done. My rose has bloomed, which I'm really surprised about because the bud had actually been eaten. So that's looking a little bit frayed. And I've got another bud there. So I'll have to see how that does. Now I had some more shallots, which I've, if you can see through the uh, lavender, which I've potted up and did some more of those wind breaks. So we'll see how they do. Um, I split the comfrey plants and put them in their own tubs and they're really taken off. And the middle tub has got some borage. And uh, the borage and the comfrey, the bees absolutely love. And they also make good compost tea as well. So uh, I'll see how they do. My honeysuckle, you can see. It won't be long before they open up and get the flowers. Quite a few uh, little um, flower buds, for want of a better word. And a couple of videos ago, in fact, quite a few videos ago, I showed you some dead flowers. Well, two of the plants actually came back to life. So I thought, well, as soon as you uh, are a survivor, I'll get you potted on. But just look at them. Beautiful. You can't really tell because it's a bit cloudy. But the colour, really, really dark purple, and that's a cream. Beautiful. They're the violas. And then I did put it on my nasturtiums. The bees are loving that. Um. Cooker melons really taken off, getting loads of little flowers on now. So hopefully we'll get some cooker melons soon. Um, my Chinese chives, they're all coming through now. And then the newest addition to the gardening family is a little red currant bush, which is looking a little bit sorry for itself, but at a bargain basement price of 50p from Asda or Walmart, I think um, it's known as in the States. I thought, right, shove it in a pot and see how it does. There you go. And the little noise you can hear in the background. Hello. Hey. What are you doing? You're using your digger in the sand. Is it a bit wet? Hey. Are you doing construction work? <laughs> Building a digger's house, brilliant. Doing a good job there. Gonna make it big. Gonna make it big. Fantastic. Alright guys, so that's just a quick update on everything that's new and so yeah, really excited. So take care. I'll see you in the next video. So ta ta for now. Bye!